Hey everyone, this is Frito Lagarage Rave and I'm here with my recap and review of Fellow Travelers season number one, episode number two, which is titled Bulletproof. And the premiere episode was way too emotional. A lot happened. We we jumped through quite a lot of eras and I'm not really sure if I'm a fan of basically having uh, the show basically showed us that in the present that them that something major happened between them and Hawks and them even though he now has HIV he doesn't want to meet Hawks but Hawks decides to pay him a visit because he knows he's dying and I'm not re- yeah again I'm not really sure if I wanted to know their present relationship like right in the first episode because it kind of does away with the mystery about what happened between these two and even though they do share certain romantic scenes in the past I already know where their relationship relationship status is in the present so I'm like that kind of takes away from the dramatic impact of it all anyway it is what it is so yeah the entire season is just gonna jump between uh, the past and the present. Anyway, uh, the last episode ended up with uh, Hawks getting a call and at first I was like, okay, so Tim actually called him, but no, it turns out that it was Tim's sister. She decides to pay Hawks a visit and uh, her name is Maggie and she's like, you know what, Hawks? Tim doesn't want to meet you. Stay away from him. You basically ruined him ever being having uh, ever having a chance at a healthy relationship every man that he ended up uh, encountering he he just used to say that that particular man just didn't compare to you and you just ruined his life and i'm like you know what fellow travelers even though you might try to romanticize tim's and hawk's relationship it was not a healthy relationship it was toxic so yeah maggie is like you know what stay away from tim hawks just just go away we got to the past and i think it's 1952 or something it's it's the early 50s and we get to see uh, lucy's brother and apparently he's into drinking and smoking and getting into trouble and he doesn't want to follow his father's footsteps and he's like you know what it doesn't matter if i follow my father's footsteps or not you are the one who's going to follow it right right hawks and at first i was like did something happen between these two? I do not want Hawks to be hooking up with Lucy's brother. But thankfully that didn't happen. It turns out that Mary and Tim have gotten closer as friends. They're basically using each other as beards. However, Tim doesn't know that Mary is a lesbian. As he's like taking taking her to different dates and having her meet other people. And I'm like, yeah, uh, Mary is a lesbian. And I hope that Tim finds out soon. And, and he does. Hawks and Tim continue to hook up in secret and this is where Hawks ends up telling uh, telling Tim about Mary being a lesbian and Tim is like, uh, why didn't you tell me that earlier? And Hawks is like, you know what, it wasn't my place to tell. Uh, I'm, but I'm telling you now and it's beneficial for both of you. You both need cover. You both need basically beard. So keep on seeing her. And then uh, Hawks ends up sharing a very emotional scene with Tim where Tim is like, what do you want, Hawks? What do you want with your life? And Hawks is like, you know what? In five, six years, I'm going to be posted somewhere overseas. And when they'll call me back, I'll say no and I'll retire. I'll buy a villa near the beach and I'll... I'll end up living with the person that I want, seeing the person that I want. I just want to be, I just want to go away from all of this. And I'm like, we know, we already know that that won't happen again. Again, I'm not a fan of already knowing what happened between these two in the present and what Cox's life is in the present. I think that that particular reveal should have happened like midway through the season. But hey, got to deal with whatever narrative the writers are sharing with us. It's the next morning and Hawks wakes up and he's just smiling, looking at a sleeping Tim next to him. And then he realizes that, oh no, it's morning. Tim needs to go. So they heard her hurriedly. What? I can't pronounce right now. <laughs> I can't pronounce word. Yeah. They quickly, they quickly get up, they get dressed and it's, it's time for Tim to leave. However, Tim ends, uh, and Hawks is like, you know what, before, uh, Tim, before you leave, I need to check to see if the coast is clear. It's clear. Tim leaves. And then he realized, then Hawks realizes that Tim left his glasses. So Tim comes back. And one of Hawks' neighbors sees that and Hawks uh, quickly is like uh, a new paper boy. And I'm like, "Mm mm-hmm, considering what's happening during this era, you need to be more careful. 
And then we get this scene about the Rosenberg trial and a lot of politics and basically uh, McCarthy and other politicians saying that uh, communism has entered the world, uh, entered America and yada, yada, yada. And also how we need to get rid of the queer community as well. And again, I don't want to focus more uh, a lot about uh, when it comes to the politics of it all. I want to talk about the relationships. Of course, Mary isn't uh, big when it comes to like all of these politicians wanting to get rid of the queer community. And she's like, Hawks, aren't you worried about all of this? And Hawks is like, you know what, Mary? It is what it is. And I need you to continue seeing Tim to keep your cover going. And Mary doesn't like his tone. Then we have this scene featuring Marcus and the newspaper that he is running. And then they talk about uh, an author, uh, not an author, my bad, a poet. And Marcus wants to run a story on the poet. However, his colleagues are like, well, we have a suspicion that that poet, poet is queer and the black community doesn't want that. But of course, Marcus, Marcus wants to push for it. And his colleagues are like, you know what that man needs? That man needs to lay with more women. And I'm like, oh, okay, so I guess his colleagues know that he's queer or they suspect, but I think they won't say anything because they're kind of supportive in their own way. Talks about communism continue and Marcus tries to ask a question and the uh, people he's asking, they're like, you know what, we would rather appreciate questions from an actual uh, reporter because they don't consider Marcus and his newspaper actual uh, an actual publication, which, of course, wow, it happens. We then get the scene between Hawks and his mom, and his mom is very glad that Hawks decided to invite her for lunch. And this is where both of them talk about how Hawks' father is dying, and they are very rich. And his, his mother just wants Hawks to apologize, even if, the, if, even if the apology is insincere, because she wants Hawks to uh, get the money, his share of the family fortune. And Hawks is like, you know what, I'll think about it. Tim and Mary uh, like sit with each other during lunch and Mary ends up sharing her egg salad sandwiches with them. And you know what? I want to eat an egg salad sandwich right now. And she's like, you know what? Uh, oh, what do you think about uh, everything that's happening regarding the queer community? And Tim is like, you know what, Mary? I just want to end it. I just want, I just want it to, I just want to be free. I don't want to hide anymore and yada, yada, yada. And this is also where Tim's bring, uh, Tim brings up Hawks. If I remember correctly, because he's like, you know what? Hawks isn't really communicating with me right uh, right now the way he used to. I think I made a mistake. I think I kind of scared him away. And Mary is like, you know what, Tim? Don't worry about Hawks anyway. Uh, anyway, I wanted to invite you over to my house. I'm throwing a party. And Tim is like, no, I'm busy because Hawks will call. And Mary is like, you know what? I'm giving you my number and address anyway. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you there. It's time for another trial, which Marcus has been covering. However, this time, the people inside the courthouse, they don't want Marcus to enter. And the guard tells him that. And of course, Marcus isn't a fan of it. But hey, what can he do? Tim waits for Hawks to call him, but the call never comes. And Tim is like, you know what? F this. I'm going to go and attend Mary's uh, Mary's party. And he comes in and he sees Mary's friends, the entire queer community over there that Mary knows. Uh, basically her friends, right? And it turns out that Mary is actually living with her girlfriend named Charlotte or something. Something like that. She she uh, She's the woman over here. And uh, they're, they're living happily because the landlord thinks that these two are just roommates and you know they were roommates <laughs> they're just roommates and they're living together to save on money and I really like this scene because it's the first time that Tim has encountered like a whole bunch of queer people who are free who are having fun and Tim likes that Tim can't have this when he's with Hawks the women are dancing together and Tim is all alone. However, one of the gay guys in the group, he asks Tim for a dance and then these two slow dance. And again, this this is what Tim wants. Tim ends up going with the guy and he basically walks uh, him home. And at first I was like, are these two going to hook up with each other? But no, uh, as they're walking, they talk about religion and their fate. And Tim is like, you know what? I'm confused because I miss God. But after what I've done, after what, after what I've been doing with other men, aka Hawks, I'm not really sure if I can face God anymore. And, and the guy is like, you know what? That's a decision you have to make for yourself because I still have God. And Tim is like, how? And he's like, well, Oh, I'm celibate. So even though I'm queer, I am celibate and I still have a connection with God, which which is something that's still preached 
today and it's basically like hey god made you the way you are god made you queer however being queer isn't really a sin it's just something you have to live with what's a sin and when it comes to religious uh, text it's that the act of being queer the act of hooking up with other men and stuff so if you don't do that and you continue to be if you continue to be queer well you know what good luck to you Marcus and uh, Hawks end up meeting each other at the cafe that they frequently visit. And we also get introduced to this new character who's a drag queen on the, uh, on the right, on the screen. And I guess she has the hots for Marcus. And from the promo material, I know that these two are going to hook up, which, hey, I'm here for it. Anyway, Marcus talks to um, Hawks about how he got barred from attending the trial and how there's a lot of racism in the profession uh, in the profession that they're doing and that white people have it easier which yeah of course and also these two uh, talk about Tim as well because Marcus like you know what Tim is a good boy Hawks and you're gonna destroy him stay away from him and uh, because Hawks is like you know what it's difficult being with them and Marcus like uh, the difference between you uh, us Hawks is that like when it comes down to it, I would like to have something nicer and something better. But you, Hawks, you don't want to be free in a in a sense. And I'm like, you know what? That makes sense because even though in the present, I think that Marcus is more free living when it comes to Hawks. Hawks just he just I'm not really sure what how how I should like describe it. He just kind of did everything that was against his own wishes in a way but then again but then again it kind of makes sense his decisions make sense after a conversation he has with his mom which we'll get to in a bit Hawks pays a visit to his family everyone is having I guess it's breakfast or lunch whatever and they all want to know what Hawks been up to and Hawks is like you know what I can't do this right now I want to I want to rest and his mom is like well yeah one of the maids ended up cleaning your room you can go and take a little nap and then when your father's awake you can go talk to him while that's happening, Tim ends up asking Marcus if he's been in contact with Hawks, and Hawks is like, uh, and Marcus is like, well, I'll let you know if you if you answer a question about Smith, some guy that uh, I guess McCarthy wants to appoint or whoever. Again, the politics of it all, I'm not interested really not that interested and Tim is like okay fine so this guy Dave I think his name is David yeah so this guy David he ended up basically uh, lying about his injury so he can uh, avoid being drafted and now I want you to tell me about Hawks and Mark is like yeah I recently met Hawks and he was at the club looking for trouble and again he warns Tim about Hawks and I'm like Tim baby you're handsome enough, you're nerdy enough, you can find a very good man who's who will be happy enough to live with you in a more freer way. You need to let Hawks go. But hey, the heart the heart wants what it wants. Mary's girlfriend uh, is in an emergency and she wants to meet up with Mary and Mary's like, okay, what's up? So it turns out that there's this guy at, I think her name is Charlotte, right? I could be wrong. Let's call her Charlotte. So there's a guy at Charlotte's workplace who has been asking her out and she's been saying no. And of course, we know that most men, they can't handle the no. So after she continued to say no to him, he, she suspected that she was a lesbian and he reported her and now she's under investigation. And the team is going to come and visit their apartment and she warns Mary about it. And Mary's like, you know what? It's it's going to be okay, okay? We're, we'll handle this together. Um, uh, Hawks ends up taking out this uh, badminton trophy, uh, not badminton, my bad, this tennis uh, trophy. And, this is, uh, and on the tennis trophy, there's also the name Kenneth. And this is where we see Kenneth in a flashback. I guess uh, one of the guys that uh, Hawks really, really loved. And yeah, memories come back again. Hawks has a heart, but considering his upbringing and his and his professional goals, he can't really. He needs he needs to stay uh, in a very very particular manner in order to keep up appearances, and he has to have his guard up. Hawks' father is up. Uh, oh, is up. <laughs> Hawk's father is awake and it's time for Hawks to meet him and his dad is like okay so you're here I knew that you would uh, appear when I was about to die so out with it you're here to apologize right and Hawks is like uh just to be sh clear I want I want you to tell me what I need to apologize for and his dad is like well for making me live with 
for decades uh, when it comes to rumors about my son being a homosexual and also the fact that I walked into a room one day and you were on your knees servicing that Kenny boy and I'm like, oh, oh, wow, that, that's an image that no parent should see. <laughs> And uh, yeah, he's like, okay, I'm waiting for my apology, Hawks. And Hawks is like, you know what? I am sorry, old man. I'm sorry that you're dying and no one cares about you dying. And yeah, he just walks away, which again, Hawks is not going to apologize for loving Ken. And his dad is like, I'm never going to leave you any money. I'm going to take you out of my will. And Hawks does not care. So he goes out, uh, he, he walks out of this house and he ends up smoking outside. His mother comes in and he's, uh, and she's like, okay, so I guess that the apology didn't go well. And he's like, nope, it went as expected. And this is where he asks her about why she stayed with his dad for so long and how he should have helped her leave him. And she's like, no, Hawks, this is the life that I chose. I wanted certain things and I decided to take them and to have those things I had to remain his wife and I'm okay with it and Haas was like okay uh, okay if I understand that in a way and that that's what I want to talk about when I mentioned that uh, Hawks's decisions in his life they make sense after what he saw his mom go through because his mom wanted a certain type of life she decided to she decided to keep ma be, uh, be mar continue being married with uh, with Hawks uh, to, to Hawks uh, dad, and again, even though Hawks wants a life uh, to uh, in which he can live a life freely as a queer guy, he can't have that because what he also wants is a career to keep up appearances. He wants a political career and everything. So just like his mom, he ends up keeping his own personal desires to the side and he prioritized the life that he wanted. And again, that makes sense. And also the fact that he showed up to Tim after decades when he's dying, that relates to Hawks showing up to his dad's bed when his dad is gonna die. And I'm like, wow, Hawks, you really are... I wouldn't say outright toxic, but he has issues. Anyway, before he drives off, he's like, you know what, mom? I just want to let you know that there is someone. And his mom is happy for him that he basically uh, got over Ken and he found some uh, someone to love. But again, we know how, how that panned out. Hawks is back in town and he decides to pay Tim a visit after ignoring him for a very long time and he walks in and, it, and both of them hook up and yeah, he's like, I'm home now. Again, he, he loves Tim, but ugh, certain other things are more of a priority for Hawks. We get this entire scene where Mary and uh, Charlotte or Claudia are being interrogated by the anti-queer investigation team and and Mary out, outright lies. She's like, yeah, I sleep on the sofa because the bedroom belongs to my friend and yada, yada, yada. And I guess the investigation team kind of buys it. Now, this was a very, very heavy scene in the sense that after everything that Mary went through, Tim decides to pay Hawks a visit. And he's like, Hawks, Mary's in trouble. His Her, her girlfriend is being investigated. I want you to help her make some calls, uh, talk to the senator, whatnot, get her, get her, get her pardoned, what, whatever, right? And Hawks is like, you know what? I can't do that. But what I can do is save all of us. So, uh, in a in a manner of speaking, and he asks Tim to start writing a letter, which is basically a breakup letter that he wants uh, Tim, uh, Tim to write. And Tim is like, I can't do that. And Hawks is like, well, we have no other options. I want you to write this breakup letter for Mary, and then Mary will show that, that to the investigation team and then pin it all on Charlotte. And Tim is like, no, she would never do that. She loves her. And Hawks is like, just watch her do that. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, oh, okay. After the letter is uh, finished, Tim walks up and he's like, you know what? I don't understand any of this. I don't understand you, Hawks. And he decides to leave and Hawks is like, you don't have to leave. You can wait. And he's like, wait, for what? An R just so that we can have sex and then I'll have to leave anyway? No, I'm going. So he basically breaks up with Hawks for now. In the present, we get to see Hawks calling Lucy and he's like, Lucy, I love you. I'm sorry. I want to come back home as, early, as soon as possible. And after he makes a call, he decides to walk into a, pub, into a queer pub. And I'm like, <sighs> on one hand, he says he loves Lucy. And on the other hand, he has been cheating on her. And I'm like, Hawks, no, you are just a destructive person. 
at the club, he gets approached by this uh, young queer couple and they're like, hey, daddy, you want to have fun? Even though we are on a date right now, I can make time for you. And Hawks is like, aren't you afraid of a, when it comes to what's going around the virus? Don't you think that you'll catch it? And the young queer men are like, no, I work out. I, I have a healthy diet and it won't infect me. And Hawks is like, uh, you know what? what uh, so you, you're basically bulletproof, right? which relates to the title of the episode and and the young man queer guy is like yeah i'm bulletproof and i was like you know what the issue is that even if you think that you're bulletproof i'm uh we uh the, the others aren't and then he walks away and also i think he mentioned being bulletproof when early on in the episode when he was laying down with them and sharing an emotional moment about what he wanted to do with his life because hawks is bulletproof in a way because of his connections and everyone else can get destroyed around him and yeah hawks can't wait no more and he's like you know what f this i'm gonna go and visit visit them whether he wants to meet me or not so he walks in and he knocks on the door and at first tim is like uh maggie the door is unlocked you forgot your keys didn't you and it's hawks and he walks in and tim is like uh i know that my condition is getting worse and my eyesight and my brain isn't what it, what they were used to be but i think that i'm hallucinating when it comes to seeing mr hawks in front of me and also like no it's me skippy i'm really here and i have a feeling that tim tim expected him to show up sooner or later and then maggie walks in and i guess maggie was expecting hawks to and she's like uh is he gonna stay for dinner and tim is like if he wants to and i'm like tim no baby no no mary ends up showing the letter the breakup letter that tim wrote her she shows it to the investigation team and she's like yep it turns out that tim was in love with me but whenever we were together he had he was getting these sus vibes from charlotte and he warned me about her but i didn't listen but after your uh, first interview i confronted her about it and it turns out that yep she was in love with me she was a lesbian and i asked her to move out immediately and now she's gone back to her parents uh, parents away away from the city An investigation team is like okay thank you Marcus ended up doing some research on the David guy and he ends up giving the, all of the research to one of the senators who uh, are the politicians who wanted to be in David's position and the guy is like why are you handing all be all of this and Marcus is like well it's because my publication my paper isn't strong enough to do something but you are so I want you to use all of this information and get to David. Hawks ends up having a conversation about how an eligible bachelor like him, people are talking about how an eligible bachelor like him still hasn't married and Hawks is like, yep, the clock is running out, I need to make a decision. And he ends up going to Lucy and he starts flirting with him again. Again, this entire scene reminded me of the conversation he had with his mom because when it comes down to it, I guess he is his mom's son. The drag queen at the club notices Marcus all alone and she ended up reading Marcus's newspaper and he's like, uh, do you know more about the poet, more about the poem? And Marcus recites the poem to him. And while the poem is being recited as a voiceover, we get to see Mary crying because of what she had been forced to do, which makes sense, which makes sense because she, again, like Hawks, she has certain goals she want to meet. And also, Tim decided to pay the church another visit. Marcus and the drag queen, they make out their thing now, and hopefully the relationship is uh, works out better than Tim and, Tim and Hawks. And over in the present, it's time for dinner, and Maggie helps uh, Tim do the table, and Hawks is invited. And I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what these two are going to talk about in the future, because... In the present, basically, not the future, in the present. Because, again, I'm like, this should not be happening. This should not be happening. This relationship was not healthy. And the episode ends with uh, Tim making a confession that he had carnal relationships with other men. And the priest is like, are you sorry about the relationships? Are you really, really, f do you really feel sorry about your sins? And Tim is like, yes, yes, I do. And the episode ends. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> But yeah, another enjoyable episode and part of me feels that this entire show should have been released at once to be binge watched, but it is what it is. Anyway, let me know what you thought of the episode down in the comment section below and until next time, stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. See you guys later.